So let's delve a little deeper into probability theory. So we're going to look more in depth at probabilities that are not equally likely. And again, I feel like I already talked about this a little bit in the last video, but I just wanted to sort of formalize it a little bit, give you a nice formal definition. Let S be a sample space of an experiment. Again, S is just the set of all outcomes, the sample space. With a finite number of outcomes, we're not gonna deal with any infinite outcomes in this course. We assign P of S to each outcome S so that the probability is between zero and one for each outcome and the sum of all the probabilities is one. So really it's the same, a couple of the same rules that we talked about before. Here we're just specifying that the events are not equally likely. When we have situations like this, quite often you will be asked to give a probability distribution or a probability model. And all I'm looking for there is just the set of all of the outcomes along with their probabilities. So a function P that gives me the outcomes and of course those probabilities. So let's look at our first example together. A coin is biased so that tails lands face up twice as often as heads. So find the probability distribution. So, and this might be very straightforward and you might get this right away, but if you don't, let's just sort of look at one together. We're saying the probability of tails is equal to two times the probability of heads because tails lands face or tails lands up twice as often as heads. So I would have to take heads times two to get tails. Well, I know that this all adds up to one. So the probability of heads plus the probability of tails must add up to one because those are the only two items in the sample space, heads and tails. And so how am I going to define these probabilities? Well, if I know that probability of tails is actually two times the probability of heads, then I can say that this is actually one is the probability of three heads. So obviously the probability, um, I forgot a P, sorry. Probability of heads is then one third, which means the probability of tails is two thirds. Now, did I have to do all of that math to figure that out? No, <laughs> but just in case it wasn't clear where one third and two thirds came from, then that is a way mathematically that you could figure it out. So again, the probability distribution would be that the probability of heads is one third and the probability of tails is two thirds. This would be my probability distribution because it gives the outcomes and their resulting probabilities. So again, here's another union definition. Remember before when we talked about the union, we said, hey, if you are looking for the probability of the union of two events, then we would just take the probability of A plus the probability of B, and then we would subtract if there was any overlap. Well, what this one is saying is if you have pairwise disjoint events, well, that means there is no overlap, so we don't have to subtract. They're saying if you want to find the union of a sequence of events, all you're doing is finding the sum of those events. So I didn't have to worry about taking away the intersection because they are pairwise disjoint. So it's essentially this formula right here same formula, different notation. So again, let's look at an example like our last example, um, but where we have to actually figure out, assign the probabilities and then find the union. Suppose a die is biased so that two appears twice as often as the other five outcomes. So again, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six are my outcomes on a die. Two appears twice as often and all of these just occur one time. So that's seven total outcomes. So this would be one out of seven, two out of seven, one out of seven, you get the idea. So easier way to think about it than writing a stupid equation like I did on the last one. So if I'm looking for what is the probability of even, I'm just going to take any of the outcomes that, that are even, like two, and I'm gonna add them together. And four, 
and 6. So really it's just a different way of saying a rule that we already knew to find that there's a 4 sevenths probability that I roll an even number. Let's talk a little bit more about conditional probabilities. We didn't really formalize it in our last video when we talked about conditional probabilities. We just said, hey, sometimes the probability can be different, but we didn't do an example. So again, to formalize the definition, A and B are events with the probability of B not zero, essentially greater than zero. The conditional probability of A given B is the probability of the intersection, which means a and B both have occurred over the probability that B has occurred. Because again, we're limiting our population down to just when B has already occurred. So again, let's look at an example so that this makes sense. A bit string of length four is generated at random so that, so that each of the 16 bit strings of length four, and again, 16 came from two to the fourth, is equally likely. What is the probability that the bit string contains at least two consecutive zeros given the first bit is a zero? So in this situation, I'm finding the probability of two, I'm sorry, at least two zeros given first bit is a zero. So you might see in the book they're going to use letters like E and F. They'll say let E represent that there are at least two zeros and F represent that the first bit is a zero and that simplifies things a little bit. I just go ahead and write the words right in there. So again what I'm looking for is on the numerator I'm looking for the probability that both of these events are true. That there are at least two zeros and that the first bit is a zero. For my denominator, I'm trying to find the probability that the first bit is a zero. So let's find these probabilities. The denominator is actually pretty easy because we know that there are two to the fourth ways. There's 16 ways. And half of those ways are going to be starting with zero because half of the ways will start with one and half start with zero because there's only two options. So just one half. What is the numerator though? The numerator is anything that both starts with a zero and has at least two uh, consecutive zeros. So I would really just have to list these to know I've got zero, 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 zero. I have zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one, one, and zero, one, zero, zero. Those are my options. The rest of them would not start with a zero or wouldn't have two consecutive zeros like I have here. So I have find, found five ways out of 16. So five out of 16 divided by one half, which ends up being five eighths. And that's going to be my solution. Independence is one that we have not talked about yet. And independence is just a way for us to know if the outcomes of one event affect another event. And so the way that we can formalize that definition is to say, that the probability of A intersect B must be the probability of A times the probability of B. So let's take a look at an example where we can see whether or not two events are independent. So assume a family has two children. Obviously that means boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. Are having two boys, so that's one event, or having at least one boy independent? So we're asking, are those two independent? So let's just say this is event A and this is B. So using our formula, we're going to look at probability of A intersect B and does that equal the probability of A times the probability of B? So let's look at the probability of A. 
The probability of A is having two boys, and that is just one out of four. The probability of B is having at least one boy, so that's one, two, three options out of four. So on the right side of my equation, I have three sixteenths. On the left side, I'm looking at the probability of A intersect B. And remember that A intersect B just means that both events have occurred. So I'm looking for out of these four, what is, how many of those four do they have both two boys and at least one boy? Well, that's just the first one. They have two boys and at least one boy, and they both have to be true. So that's just one out of four, and one out of four not equal to 3 16ths, and therefore we can say that they are not independent.